Hello everyone, welcome to Cyber Platter. My name is Pratik and I will lead today's video. <clears throat> A little intro about me. I've been conducting security interviews for security analysts and security engineers for many years now. And I've observed that people tend to miss out on the basics. Uh, I've seen many videos and I see a lot of confusion between the two roles. For me, security is about judgment and then the tools. Anyone can learn tools, but having the right frame of mind to judge a particular incident or scenario is more important. The agenda for today is first to understand the difference between security analyst and security engineer, and then we'll talk about the roles, roles and responsibilities of the both. We'll also talk about how does a typical interview for both look like and what are the areas of focus. <clears throat> so let's get this going. At a high level, following are the roles and responsibilities of cybersecurity analyst versus cybersecurity engineer. In this video, we are going to talk about all of those. So let's take a look. Security analyst. So before you get into all of this, you need to understand <clears throat> that there are different roles, uh, different levels of a security analyst. It starts from level one up till level four, and, and it really depends on an organization. Uh, a lot of people do not have level fours, whereas a lot of people, a lot of companies have level five as one of their roles. So to understand it better, you know, let's put it this way. A lot of times levels are defined on the basis of your experience. Level one is basically a, a fresher or, or somebody who's with an experience of, let's say one years. And level five is somebody who is uh, a, a SOC lead or a SOC architect or security architect. And you know they, they would have a lot of experience in, in cybersecurity. Um, I, I know of companies where, where people, uh, where a level five or an architect have had an experience of 20 years in cybersecurity. So it really depends on the company and depends upon your experience. So, so what does security analyst mean? What is that role exactly? What are the day-to-day -day responsibilities? So let's put it this way. Security analyst is anybody who handles the day-to-day -day operations in security. For example, if you see the list, operational support from information security tools, alerting, triaging, and maintenance. Uh, <clears throat> so when we talk about alerting and triaging, there are many tools like, like SIM, EDR, from where you 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 would you are continuously fed a lot of information, and, and this information uh, reaches to the security team in a form of an, form of an alert. So, looking at those alerts, uh, performing triage on those alerts uh, is one of one of the very important and primary responsibility of a security analyst. <clears throat> there are other aspects to this too. A uh, security analyst in a lot of companies is also responsible for vulnerability management. Uh, uh, business continuity, networking, and risk management. So, I understand this is a vague term, but but you know, also try to understand that risk management, networking, business continuity, all these things are 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 different roles. So, consider this as a starting point of for each of these towers, or I can say business areas. <clears throat> One of the responsibilities of security analyst is also to perform first level of incident response and forensics activities. You know, you're monitoring alerts on day-to-day -day basis and, and you, you realize that one of the alerts can lead to an incident. So for what are the steps that you would take an incident? And, and we'll talk about this more in the latter part of the video. <clears throat> uh, Next point is access security controls and evaluate the security posture of organizational internal control. So now, since you have the visibility uh, to a lot of information, a lot of alerts, data from, from various endpoints, servers, networking devices, uh, it you would be in the best position to, to recommend uh, what kind of controls are, are supposed to be established or, or you know, looking at certain flaws that, you know, you may see, you may see a trend of a specific security alert. And, and that is when, that is how you come across a situation where you'll have to implement a security control or at least reach out to the next level of teams to, to help them give the data and also help them with the right information, which can later be a project. Uh, you would do evaluation of uh, different compliances with organization security standards. Uh, this is also uh, something that relates to point two, 
not exactly an operation uh, in depth task but the first level of compliance is something that you would definitely check so if if a specific server is falling under uh, for example iso iso compliance you know I, or if a specific server uh, there are, there is a list of different compliances so yeah one of one of the many one of the very important things is to collaborate with different departments across it uh, and also the business to develop security program so uh, <clears throat> so there would be a lot of cases when you're working you would see as as i mentioned in in, in in one of my previous points that you would see a lot of flaws and a lot of limitations so that is what you have to pick up and start start to having some kind of a security program and well, and of course the last point which is also very important uh, you are the one who are going to research on new security trends what's happening in the market what new vulnerabilities coming up you know zero day for example new methods new techniques and you have to be very proactive in all these things so one of the examples was uh, for example lock 4 j attack which recently happened so you had to be on we had to be on top of every ioc that was being released in the market to to, to detect those kind of attacks so we were doing ioc analysis and we used to add those iocs in in our edrs in our sim and, and other such tools so having that is is really very really important so what look what does uh, a, a typical security analyst interview look like so the analyst interview is divided basically on two on, on in two different parts the first one is going to be your technical knowledge and second one is going to be the process knowledge so you see a lot of points mentioned over here in technical knowledge and uh, we are going to make a lot of more videos on each of these points to to really help you answer the questions correctly you know for example dns <clears throat> I ask this question in every interview, but I, I remember hardly one or two people answering it correctly. Everybody knows what's DNS. Everybody knows is it converts, a, you know, your URL into an IP address into a URL and, and all those things. But when I talk about the in-depth concept of DNS, nobody knows that. What is 13 root servers? What is recursive DNS? So, so we're going to talk about all these things uh, in depth. Uh, we would also help you to answer this question in short. So if anybody is asking you what is DNS. Uh, you should be able to answer it uh, in brief in a very precise manner. So there are, these are several different topics like DNS, phishing, endpoint detection response, antiviruses, ransomware, uh, different questions on networking and network security. And this this would be a little basic that that is going to be required by each and every SOC analyst to do their day-to-day -day tasks. We'll talk about application security. So uh, in that, we'll talk about different kinds of application security related attacks like you know, the ones listed in OS top 10, for example. <clears throat> Cloud security is a big thing right now. And, and having that knowledge is definitely a plus point in any cybersecurity interview that you give nowadays. Vulnerability management, uh, you know, though vulnerability management uh, is, is a very vague term, but but uh, there are security operation analysts who are handling vulnerability management. And it's it's a lot. It's not just handling a tool. It is managing of vulnerabilities. We'll also talk about identity and access management, uh, as well as uh, operating system. So when it comes to operating system, having the basic understanding of Linux, Unix, and, and different flavors is, is really very important. <clears throat> so all in all, uh, all these videos will help you to, to answer the questions correctly. We are not going to go in depth from an engineering perspective into all of these topics, but we would help you understand everything that is supposed to be known for this specific topic to crack an interview of security analyst. <clears throat> so the next is process knowledge. So in cybersecurity operations, specifically in security operations center where an analyst works, processes are as important as tools. So having the right processes, having the right process knowledge is very important. And not just knowledge, but also following them. Everybody can, anybody can draft a process, but when it comes to a real-time issue, real-time incident, how do you follow that process is very important. So the first and foremost process, which is, you know, quote unquote, the most important process in cybersecurity is incident response. <clears throat> there are different stages in incident response, like preparation, identification, containment, eradication, recovery, and lessons learned. We will talk through each of these uh, specific points in, in incident response video that we are going to make very soon. 
and and i will help you cover all these points and what is the best way to answer the questions on this <clears throat> understanding this sequence is very important so please make sure you always remember the sequence because if you lose out on sequence uh, then honestly you know you don't know the incident response process the next thing is incident management which we will cover as a part of incident response because incident response and incident management goes hand in hand there is a difference for sure but uh, but it's important that we understand and we correlate these two things that is why we'll have that video together the next one is ransomware uh, ransomware a lot there are a lot of tools in the market who claim that they can they can detect ransomware and they can but but only after it has happened so it is really important that that we understand the ransomware process and not only that i mean uh, what do you do in, in case of you you find that first computer in your organization that that is under ransomware attack so more than blocking and you know more than doing any other things following the right process to make sure it doesn't spread anymore and it stops right there is very important uh, security analyst is uh, it works a lot as per the playbooks or run books you know they, they can call it whatever based on the company but but having playbooks and 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 run books are very important uh, that is how we we approach a specific incident or that is how we we can approach a specific issue then we'll talk about the reporting and kpi so to track all of the things that we are doing reporting is very important kpis are very important to understand how efficient the cyber security is working how many alerts we are receiving each day how many of those are false positive positives how many alerts are getting converted into incidents how long we are taking to fix <clears throat> fix each and every alert all that falls under kpis and and that is very important to track all right so going back to the next point is security engineer so this is the basic difference guys i mean security analyst is the one who handles the op uh, operations and engineer is the one who implements implements and maintains different major components of cyber security as as you see in the point first point that i've uh, that we have here in the job description uh, engineer uh, an engineer implements and monitors security measures for protection of computer systems and networks and information so so any time you uh, an engineer <clears throat> implements something across an organization that after we, after that it comes into an operation so so these two things go hand in hand always remember because a lot of time engineering projects are are derived from from the weaknesses that an operation analyst sees and, and where uh, on the other hand unless and until a, a, sec a security engineer does not implement those measures uh, those flaws cannot be removed and it and an analyst can will keep seeing those things again and again so that point is very important this is a very basic difference and always keep in mind so here uh, something that i really want to mention is uh, it is really important that you align your area of interest okay a lot of people i have seen they they treat security engineering as as the le next level of security operations which is not the case both are different things and and people can have an area where they they are interested i i have a lot of people who do not want to leave security operations because they get to understand learn new trends techniques and everything whereas uh, you know I, i have a lot of i've seen a lot of unhappy engineers because all they have to do is implement things and maintain them whereas the operations analyst is really 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 focused on on a lot of new things that are happening in the market so do not treat engineering as the next level to operations both are different things both of them can have have parallel hierarchies you know engineer can be a junior senior similarly an analyst can be a junior senior but if this is your focus security engineering is something that where you want to be in the future i would say always start your career as an analyst security analyst that is when you understand cyber security that is when you get that judgment yeah. you know so quick quick point from my side so the next thing that a security engineer does is identifying and defining requ requirements so an operation analyst goes to an engineer and he says that hey this is a kind of alerts that we are seeing a lot you know uh do we need to implement this specific measures you know we are seeing a lot of alerts uh on on people using xyz softwares on their computer so uh let's come up with some kind of a plan where we can ban these applications into the different tools that we have that is when a security engineer starts working on it he he prepares a high level plan and and you know this this can be put up as a project and uh, that is how the things are implemented 
the next very important thing is designing security architecture and develop detailed cybersecurity design. So <clears throat> having an architecture is very important. Uh, architecture is not just of, of tools and you know, it can be of processes, it can be of people. Okay, so uh, having an architecture on data flows, for example, you know, how the data is flowing from different tools uh, within, within an organization, uh, how the data is flowing from, from network devices to, to the computer and, and vice versa. So having that information is very important. Uh, an engineer also does some level of troubleshooting on devices. Uh, it's not something very proactive, but but engineer is often involved with people from different towers like networking and, and applications and data and, and endpoints. Those are the kind of uh, uh, places where a security engineer is involved for troubleshooting purposes in order to also make sure that uh, uh, there is the, the security is not compromised when it comes to keeping the devices up and running. An engineer will also develop technical solutions, new tools. Uh, he would work with an analyst hand in hand on vulnerabilities uh, and, and automate a, a lot of repeatable tasks. So for an analyst, uh, alert fatigue is a big thing, you know, so, so we want to make sure that that alert fatigue is always tackled in such a way that a lot of time of analyst is uh, is is kind of dedicated to working on things and not closing things as false positives. <clears throat> so one more thing which is very important that you know the the reporting structure here, for example. So if there is an incident, there would be an uh, there would be an engineer who would typically be involved with an analyst and the, his job is to make sure that all the incidents are reported to the right people like CISO, CIO, your security managers, architect, whoever it is. Uh, as soon as possible with, with the right amount of data. Uh, <clears throat> the last point is, is very important. An analyst will also write comprehensive reports, including assessment. So, uh, I'm sorry, an engineer will also write uh, uh, comprehensive reports, including assessments based on findings, outcomes, and propositions for further system related enhancement. So, so these are the high level differences between the roles and responsibilities. Uh, uh, between cybersecurity engineer and analyst. So let's see. So we'll also talk about um, uh, security engineer uh, from an interview perspective. Uh, so security engineer will be generally, you know, it is a very niche job. So an engineer, uh, there will be a very specific requirement in a company for which an engineer is being hired. So they would be looking at some someone with, for example, endpoint and server related security experience, endpoint security. You know, they would probably be looking for somebody network security uh, with, with network security experience, application security, cloud security, you know, implementation experience like SIM, ADRs, and other tools. Um, and a little bit around processes because, you know, everything that you're implementing requires to have a right process in the back end. So we'll talk about each and everything. We'll, we'll specifically make videos on each of these topics and, uh, uh, and we'll talk about of uh, what are the kind of questions that can be asked to an engineer in endpoint security related interviews or network security related interviews. All right, so guys, stay, stay tuned. Please connect to our Discord channel. And and uh, if you feel that if, you, if you're attending any interview and if you want us to take your mock interview just for practice, please, please hit us on our Discord channel and we'll be happy to help. Thank you. Have a good day.